Mahal and allies, we are just getting news that Sharad Pawar has gotten on the phone with Nitish Kumar. That's it. That's What's going on? JVC Shriram, I think Sanju Verma. Nitish Kumar has been dialed by Sharad Pawar. There is, I think, you know, people can reach out to anybody. You know, there is absolutely no problem on that. Can what the BJP I trust is, Nitish Kumar? We have to wait for another two to three hours time. Because what I'm saying Nitish is... Nitish Kumar has 16 MPs. He has got 16 MPs. Because Mirzapur, Samajwadi Party is leading with just 138 votes. Hmm. Salimpur, 3,000 votes. Likewise, you know, you have quite a few constituencies where it is still holding. Kerry, 454 votes. So I think we are yet to call the election, particularly in Uttar Pradesh. Hmm. I'm, I'm not saying the Samajwadi Party is not winning more than 30 seats. But the number which you're seeing now, 36, could come down. But these moves are interesting. Sanju Verma wants to respond, then Suhail said. The phones are ringing. You know, Padmaja, let me first make it very clear. I think Suhail said made a very interesting point. You know, all these guys from the other side, they've been abusing Rajiv Kumar, they've been abusing the election commission, they've been saying these elections are rigged, manipulated, EVM khatre mein hai, Samvidhan khatre mein hai, democracy khatre mein hai, Tantra khatre mein hai. Guys, get a life. You know, you've been abusing constitutional, statutory, autonomous bodies. Shame on you. But more importantly, I will say this. You know, whether Sharad Pawar has called up Nitish Kumar and whether people are getting in touch with Chandra Babu Naidu, all that is uh, not in the public domain for discussion right now. What is certainly very crystal clear is that the president, by virtue of past precedents and by virtue of what the constitution entails, will always call the single largest party and an alliance which was already formed in terms of a pre-poll alliance. Pre-poll, the JDU and the TDP have been with the BJP. The okay. BJP is still the single largest party and Prime Minister Modi is going to come back for the third term. Like I said, the numbers have been less than flattering. But be that as it may, there is no doubt that it will be the BJP-led NDA which will be in power in less than 24 hours but from now. But will it be a worry that now allies are going to flex muscle? Allies will okay. now want their pound of flesh. I, I agree with that. You know, allies have been known to uh, extract their pound of flesh. But let's be very clear. For everybody who's jumping off, PMC has shown the mirror to the BJP in Bengal and DMK has shown the mirror in Tamil Nadu. PMC has done well in West Bengal. DMK has done well in Tamil Nadu. Samajwadi Party has done well in Uttar Pradesh. But PMC plus DMK plus Samajwadi Party still do not have a pan-India footprint. And Congress is the only other pan-India party will be limited to less than 100 seats and supposedly okay. the Congress is the fulcrum of this alliance. I want to quickly cut across from Amirpur. Suhail said, please bear with me for a minute because Anurag Thakur is there. He is leading by 1,68,000 votes. The celebrations have begun in Hamirpur as well. Pradeep, over to you. Yes, I too, you can see I'm here at the BJP headquarters in Hamirpur. Anurag Thakur has arrived and you can see here they are distributing sweets, they are celebrating this moment, they are beating drums. Many of these people you can see, they are dancing and they are there is a smile on their faces. But obvious reason, because this is the, for the fifth consecutive job, Anurag Thakur has won this election. And here you can see, they are giving him forward how happy you are winning this election for the fifth consecutive job. How happy you are to win this election for fifth consecutive job. What do you want to say to the people? I would like to thank all the voters and supporters who have voted for Bharatiya Janta Party. And for me, I think they, I've been very lucky that on one side where Prime Minister Modi has reposed his faith in me, my party leadership has reposed their faith in me. At the same time, my constituents, time and again for the fifth time in a row, has elected me. I'm very grateful to them. And I can assure them that the next five years, I'm going to dedicate to the people of Himachal Pradesh, especially Amir Next five years, I'm going to dedicate to the people of Himachal Pradesh. And here you can see beating Trump, people dancing, celebrating this moment for the fifth consecutive term of Raj Chakras won election. And if we talk about Himachal Pradesh, almost all the four seats, it seems to be going into the kitty of Bhatia Janta Party. They are saying, once again, there's a hundred percent reserve. This process has started in 2009, 2014, again in 2019, and once again, the similar thing had been repeated. Here you can see the youngsters, they are dancing.
election is that everyone's happy everyone celebrating dolwalas make a killing in the bjp and in the congress so he said he wanted to make a point so you asked a very important question as to what will happen the prime minister has a very unique style of functioning it's not an a malleable amoeba like style where allies will be welcome and allies can bully and he's not the kind of prime minister who will be bullied go back to vajpayee ji there were three ladies at that point in time mayavati jay lalitha and mamta who helped the government on various occasions to blackmail i'm not saying that will happen again so we need a firm leader number one number two being a literature student i leave you with one thought padmaja to away from politics never go to bed with an elephant you never know when it rolls over and the pleasure turns into pain that's also a worry that the allies will have for mr modi which by the way says two things one is it says a lot about mr modi that he's not going to buckle or succumb to any pressure that he believes will be contrary to the manifesto that the bjp has let out mm. it also tells you about the allies the fact that you mentioned sharad pawar phoning nitish kumar in politics it isn't over till the fat lady sings it's never over so don't expect these people not to be the turncoats they've always been so i have no faith in any allegiance that these people might express nitish kumar has been famous for it i mean you know sharad pawar's own party and i have a lot of respect for pawar sir but you see what happened within the ncp you never know what's going to happen but i will only leave you with one foreboding thought if this happens it will be bad for governance it may be good for democracy it will be bad for governance you okay. cannot have the prime minister of india and his government held to ransom because you need numbers and majority now you can say it's democracy right, so of course sosif so khan wants to respond moment ago suhel said only said that this is modi week point 3 that is what he said and now he is saying that modi will not succumb to any pressure from the alliance partners he is contradicting himself what will modi do he, bjp does not Let have a simple majority no, no. if no, no. if naidu no, no. sharad no, no. pawar and um, uh, and nitish nitish they, they do not offer their mps to bjp will prime minister modi go back to himalayas so what will he do will he go back to become a chief minister of gujarat okay. if he has to be in this gentleman what is this gentleman has to be along with all the alliance no, no, partners one minute one minute my friend perhaps my english is not as good as yours and i apologize for my lack of nuanced language what i meant was that modi as a prime minister and as a government because of these results has obviously been weakened but that doesn't mean modi the man is weak i suggest my friend you again revisit ren and martin without number and is not the same man okay. lack of english and the nuances i will now attempt to recraft my language skills after having heard from you all right Thank you know you i want to speaker. i want to all this while uh, the dmk has been waiting very patiently so i want to take a look at the numbers and this is very strange we see a sweep suddenly the bjp was nowhere and jay suddenly the nda not the bjp because i'm guessing this is a pnk seat two saffron spots one is a one okay one two saffron spots one. are back Dharmapuri is this is so, ha this is soumya ambumani is which is hardly AMK. surprising no, no, no. incidentally here can i please finish yeah. Somya Ambu Mani, this is a seat for which the Prime Minister had also gone and done a rally. It is the flagship seat of the PMK, Dharmapuri. Yeah, and you have got the second seat over here is Shivaganga, Shivaganga from where Devanathan Yadav. Devanathan Yadav is a leader of a regional okay. outfit who is contesting on a BJP symbol. I'll explain in a very okay. short manner. Huh. There is going to be if, if Shivaganga in our trackers in the initial ones there was a lead which he was taking, but this gentleman neither knew the demography. nor knew the geography because he does not belong to bharatiya janata party huh. but the point was he was able to get the support of mutrayer and devar which are extremely important and anti incumbency against karthi chidambaram that could be the only reason why shivaganga is working in the favor and dmk did not work properly at shivaganga in fact why they don't the like karthi chidambaram said Congress people will come just before election and go. That was the start of the campaign when I was there in Sogamga itself. 
But if Devanathan Yadav wins, that's a big, big thing. And the other shocker is that the only seat right now where the AIDMK has a lead no, it, is uh, Virudhunagar. It's squared off. Now he's trailing by 1,800 votes. Okay, so Malikam Tagore is again in the lead. He's Vijay Khan's son. All right. So we have Yazini PM of National Spokesperson of the DMK with us. Ma'am, the fact that you are clearly in the lead, but you are still down two seats. The NDA is up two seats in the lead. Your initial thoughts. This is a this is a strange election. It is shaking up all parties. It is shaking up the BJP. It's shaking up the DMK, but just a little bit. Your thoughts? No, it's not at all shaking up. Basically, actually, I'm just seeing the BJP people getting all jittery with uh, you know the, uh, all the results and stuff. And Patmaj, I would like to let you know that. This is exactly what DMK expected. I don't know if the national media is completely insulated from what's happening in Tamil Nadu or in fact the entire south of Tamil Nadu, the south of India. This is exactly what is was expected. And uh, I'm not sure of the gentleman saying who was speaking about Sivagangai. Personally, I was uh, one of the in-charges for Sivagangai and I am from the DMK and I, ha I have been working for Karthik Chidindra for like past one and a half years and so have been all the other DMK cadres, okay? So why do you think, all right, we seem to have lost the link, not our doing, we want to get back, you want to weigh in, Harish Ibrahim? Yeah. Why, why was Shiva Ganga lost? Factually, it is wrong because in Shiva Ganga, Karthik Chidambaram was leading almost 20,000 20, plus votes. Uh, he's already been leading as per the Election Commission of uh, India's but, uh, report. He's leading right one. now on ECI website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Harish, what happens? And only one thing is, Dharmaburi, it is a neck-to-neck -neck movement and only one uh, seat which is in Virudhanagar, which has been a closed uh, contest between uh, ADMK and DMK, where the fluctuation uh, margin of votes is between 200 to 500 votes. That is the only seat which is uh, under question mark as of right now. Oops. And as quoted over here, the two seats are already with the DMK kitty and 38 out of 39 has been already sealed with the DMK where the margin are almost 15,000 to 20,000 votes. And only one which has been under question mark for the last two and a half three years is Virudhanagar, which is with ADMK. And right. it is Dharmapuri a, is holding for PMK for, from morning. From he's morning, but it is, it, is, it, is, it is almost 10,000 to 15,000 votes. So, you know, that. right now, from what the ECI figures are, it's a sweep again for the DMK. 100%. And you have got no, barring one seat for the PMK, no real leads, Not no real gains for the end of the day, it will be a 39 and out of the AIA DMK also completely wiped Lord. out. Baja, so, point, the dominance of the DMK, it seems, is quite unshakable, Mr. Rajat. But, Baja, 7%, 7, of 7, point, 7 percentage points they've lost. Who? BJ, DMK. They've got 52% in the last election, 2019. They are now at 44 uh, to 45 percent. As you are a you 23. That. I'm just saying it. So they've lost seven. no share, oh, but yes. they have stuck on to their seats. See, no. yeah. if, you're, if, you're giving, if you're giving a coalition of almost 14, yeah, 14 let me, parties... Let me speak. Yes, let one second, one second. Let me speak. Let me, let me, let me, let me, he's a senior journalist. Let him speak. Okay, let the senior journalist speak. Vote share has fallen, but dominance continues in seats. Congratulations to DMK. Hmm. Number one. Number two, the Dravidian model is fading away in Tamil Nadu. Oh, God. Then let Even me speak. Let uh, me speak. I am requesting. Out of 39, he is telling that the Dravidian model is fading away. He's a spoiler. He's a spoiler. What kind of. I, I, I will also disturb you. I will disturb you. You got, disturb you got, you got disturb time. You. Huh? No heckling. I will disturb you. Let everyone be heard. Let everyone be heard. Go on. The, the Dravidian movement is failing. Hindutva is establishing in Tamil Nadu. That is the one clear point. I, I go with Mr. Sriram. BJP has taken a lead from 2% to 12% as of today. Hmm. That's a massive victory. Second thing, the Enman Enmakal Yatra of Mr. Annamalai has succeeded. And second thing, if the DMK has done much, they also lost 8 to 9% of vote because of Congress. Why did Congress State President Selva Perandagai say, we will go alone in 2026? What is that indication? Second thing, the other party Payani Swami cannot be just brushed aside because he is the one fundamental two crore people voters he has got, the cadre. So therefore, you cannot rule it out. It may be a victory for DMK for temporary, but in the longer run, nearing 2026, it is going to be a long bell for DMK. So the surprising thing is that OPS not leading in his seat, TTV Dhanakaran not leading in his seat,
DMK has won. People want that. That is the so thing. We have to question the Gujarat. The Gujarat vote is, is more important. Let's not discredit the voter. This is my thumb rule. Let's not discredit the voter. The voter has spoken. What is the reason for OPS, Dinakaran not there are opening? Six Panir Selvams over fielded O Panir Selvam. Whoever has the name called O Panir Selvam. I think there were the four Dr. Manjunath also who were fielded. So what happened? Yes, it, it was contesting as an independent. Hmm. So it was a second voting mission. As a result of which finding him itself was difficult. As far as Taney is concerned, I have to be brutally frank here. TTV Dinagaran did not spend money. Okay. Because when he entered into Usulambati and Andipati, people told us also that the TTV did not have to give money, we'll vote for him. But as we enter deeper into the constituency like Periyakulam and Taney, they said DMK candidate is giving TTV is not giving. No, no, okay, we'll okay. do a deeper yeah, dive in the evening. The Hold your horses. We will do a deeper dive in the evening. This is going nowhere. It's a very, very interesting election because it has given us so much to talk about. I'm taking